Welcome back to the Royal Berkshire Shooting School for the fifth part of our shooting time series on how to become the game shot you've always wanted to be in association with Hull Cartridge. Uh, last time we were here we were looking at how to approach your first day in the field and how to make a success of that first partridge that comes over the hedge. Uh, by this point in the season a lot of you will have been out there for a couple of days with your syndicate uh, and I'm sure that for many of you you've shot fantastically but I'm sure that for many more of you uh, it hasn't gone quite as well as you'd maybe hoped. So today we're going to be looking at Tom uh, troubleshooting and how to get the wheels back on uh, when it all uh, starts to go wrong. So the first thought we're going to look at today will be um, your unnatural swing for a right-hander, your left to right. Uh, a lot of people struggle during the season with their left to rights. Number two, we'll be looking at uh, people's obsession with lead um, as opposed to focusing on line. Uh, number three, we're looking at people when they knock their face, their jawbone and their cheekbone. And number four, we'll be looking at uh, why people stop their gun. It's a very common fault. So one of the most common faults that a lot of right-handers uh, have, and we reverse it obviously for the left-hander, is that shot going against the natural body swing. Okay, so it's your left to right. Now this is all about body mechanics, okay? Now because you're having to push the gun, okay, your gun is moving slower, but also your body is moving slower in rotation. All right, also now your right eye is moving away from the bird. So the general trick of the trade is, you're going to see or your perception of lead is slightly greater okay than, than with your natural swing which for a right hander would be your right to left okay and that's purely just a body mechanics thing so we're just going to go through a few shots with Patrick um, so you can actually sort of see the, uh, the shot the body movement uh, the footwork and the shot in motion Shot. Good shot. Have a couple more. It is very much a um, <clears throat> mental, sometimes a mental block when we're actually shooting your for the right hand, or shooting your left or right, and it's having that ability just to push the boundaries a bit in order to actually find what you're looking for and actually seeing that bird to make a successful shot. Turn nicely. It's pulled slightly low. Okay, so it goes back to when we were talking about footwork, so it's getting your feet set correctly, picking the bird up nicely, and then just allowing yourself just to make a nice smooth shot, being prepared to go a little bit further with regards to your lead and what you see. So another thought to speak about is where um, shooters are knocking their faces. So if we start with a very common one, which is where people are actually knocking their jawbone. Okay, three things could be happening here. Number one, very important, is your gun fit. We will speak about that in a later episode. Okay, but what I mean is, <clears throat> you've effectively, if the, the comb of the gun's too low, you will be looking to the back of the gun into the back of the top lever. So during the shot, okay, where your head's screwed in, you lift your head up because you can't see, uh, and, in, and it results in basically knocking your jawbone. Okay, another common one, okay, or another common one is, <clears throat> people's want and their eyes wandering. Okay, so we're about to make the shot, and instead of watching the bird dive through the gun, okay, what we do is we lift our heads to see the bird die, okay, and it pulls your head away from the gun, knocking yourself in the jawbone. It's very important that you watch your bird die through your gun if it's correctly fitted. Okay, and another common one and the reason for banging your jaw is because you've lost your style and technique with the way that you're actually standing and how you've actually approached your shot. Okay, so effectively you may have got your timing wrong, wrong on the shot, you may have actually held on to it a bit too long and you end up leaning back, you fall back onto your back foot and you can't help but for your head um, to fall back again, opening yourself up to get banged on the jawbone and then knocking yourself in your cheekbone. Okay, so what could happen? It's a gun mount issue in most cases for both. We mount the gun, okay, but instead of bringing the gun to your eyesight and then your shoulder in here, uh, like we explained in episode two, we hit our shoulder first, we screw our head into the gun, okay, and during the shot you're going to get knocked, all right, or we overmount the gun, so I do this facing the camera, all right, I do side on and then forward, so we overmount the gun, okay, so you can see I've come high here, Okay, now with this empty gun, if I come round to here, you can see now I'm actually looking down here. But you can see how tight in I've come to my cheekbone. It's going to result during the shot, you're going to end up banging your cheekbone. It's absolutely critical that you work on that consistent gun mount to stop all issues and your technique.
So what we're going to do now is we're going to demonstrate a few shots with Patrick. Okay, one, he's going to shoot it nicely, he's going to watch the bird die through the entire shot, meaning that he'll have nice gun movement and, and watch his bird fold in the air. And then I'm going to get him to deliberately check his swing just as he is about to pull the trigger, hopefully without exaggerating it, but on camera you will see that gun suddenly, himself and the gun suddenly put his brakes on. Okay. So, nice shot, pick it up. Nice shot. Lovely shot. Okay, so that's two nice shots there of Patrick finishing his shots. Now I'm going to get him to literally, just as he's about to pull the trigger, just to check himself, and you'll see that gun stop stone dead. And again. Now you saw a bit of a strange look by Patrick there. You can see how suddenly it really plays with your brain and causes uh, basically a delay. You get your timing completely wrong uh, and it all starts, so you basically become very confused as the shooter. Okay, again, yeah, that's Patrick looking at the gun. You can see how it starts to sort of pull him off, pulls him off line, okay. When we spoke about your, your, your technique and the way that you set yourself up for your shot, that's in, to enable you to get your timing right. If you pick a bird up too early, you're automatically going to hold on, hold on, hold on. You know you've gone too early, you're going to hold on, you end up looking at the gun, your timing's completely wrong. Likewise, if you go too far, start chucking your gun out too far in front of stuff, you're, you know mentally that you've gone wrong, you're going to start looking at your gun. It's about timing, tempo, get that pick up nice and watch that bird die. And again, Patrick. Shot. Good shot. Yeah, nice shot. Okay, so there's a few examples there the right and the wrong, but you must watch your bird die. Timing, tempo, pick the bird up correctly, move the gun smoothly, and watch the bird through the entire shot. So, another major problem that people find in the field <clears throat> is the obsession with lead. So, we miss a bird. Okay, and everybody automatically thinks that we must be behind it. So off we go. We set off and in the end we ended up in what I call no man's land. Okay, line is more important than lead. Lead comes off of line, lead comes off the bird. It's a very personal thing. Okay, you can't go through um, shooting in the field thinking that needs six foot, four foot, five foot. Everybody's personal, everybody has different eyesight, everybody moves a gun at a different speed. Okay, it's the process of how you get yourself there. As soon as you start to think lead, before you think about the bird, it's a bit like somebody throwing me a ball and I just decide to put my hands there, hoping that the ball's going to land in my hands. We don't do that, we watch the ball, our hands work accordingly, and it's the same when we shoot. The bird is the priority, the way we pick the bird up with our style, technique, and the way that we drive the gun into the back of the bird, and then, by that, by picking the bird up correctly, we are reading three things. One is speed, one is distance, one is direction, and in that split second we know with smooth movement where we need to go in order to make a successful shot and watching that bird die. Okay, so now with Patrick we're going to demonstrate this. Okay, we're going to start with a couple of wild shots, thinking lead, forgetting about the bird, just becoming obsessed with, oh, I need to be in front of that bird, and you'll see how he loses his body, body shape, loses style, rushes, gun goes too far, it just ends up looking messy. Okay, here we go. Alright, so you can see by that, so Patrick lost his shape, checked himself slightly, pulled the gun low. Okay, now we're going to think more about the way we're going to pick that bird up correctly. Alright, using our style and technique and the way that we turn nicely on this right to left uh, for a right hander. And you see actually Patrick make two nice shots by going through the motions, getting himself there correctly, by picking the bird up correctly by reading the bird correctly, and by watching that bird die. Nice shot. Nice shot. Okay, two completely different shots. Okay, two completely wild all over the place, no style, no technique, no thought about what you're trying to shoot, and two, they're actually thinking about what he's doing Again, style, technique, timing, tempo, reading the bird correctly, letting the bird be the priority, watching that bird die, and shooting nicely. Two more. Shot. Shot. 
thanks for tuning in to the fifth episode of our shooting time series on how to become the game shop you've always wanted to be in association with the whole cartridge here at the Royal Berkshire Shooting School. Uh, today we've been looking at some common faults out in the field and how you can put those right. Um, Tom, you were saying that you know some people feel like they conquer that September partridge, but then their shooting doesn't get any better because the birds change, but their shooting stays much the same. So next time, what are we going to be looking at? How your shooting should adapt and uh, progress over the season, is that right? Yeah, so in the next episode, we'll be looking at taking on that more challenging bird. That bird that's getting a little bit further away, higher, faster, slightly tougher bird, and taking yourself through for the rest of the season, putting everything that we've spoken to in the previous episodes, you know, keeping it going and taking yourself through to the end of the season. So from all of us at Shooting Times and at Hull Cartridge, we uh, wish you the very best of luck out there in the field.